Okay, welcome back to another Tesla Model 3 video. Today I'm going to be going over everything that you can do within the Tesla phone app because basically when you get the car, you can download an app that allows you to control the car without actually needing to be in the car. So this is the Tesla app. We're going to go over literally every function. You can see it puts a nice little picture of your car that you can wiggle about just like this. This picture does update when things change with the car. So for example, if I open this door, look at that, it's popped open. If I lean over and open Becky's door, the door's popped open on the app. So it's a nice little picture, and when you zoom it over, it gives you information on uh, Tesla's power wall thing, but we're not really bothered about that. So starting from top left and working downwards, the settings app, there isn't really anything in here. This is just general stuff. There's a little loot box on the right, which you're probably interested in. This is Tesla's referral program. So everyone that buys a Tesla with a referral link gets 1,000 free supercharge miles, and the person who has the link also gets 1,000 free supercharge miles. So if we go on my referrals, so far there's been about six people that have actually ordered a link. Sayoban looks like they've had a bit of a nightmare because they've cancelled their order six times. But hopefully everyone else has arrived and we'll get some free supercharger miles. If we click on the battery, we can see the specifics of how much percentage we've got. It also shows the nearest superchargers to us. And if I click on one of them, it shares the location with the Tesla. So the Tesla is ready to drive to that supercharger now. There's a button to open the charge port. So there's not much reason to use this, but if I click it, Woo. the charge port pops open. And then if I close it again, it closes. That's nice to have, but it's a fairly pointless feature because when you have a charger in your hand, there's a button on it that opens the port for you, so that's more convenient than opening it in the app. You can see I've got this little wiggly fella that I can wiggle about. Now this is because if you charge your Tesla battery to 100% every night, over time that makes your battery worse. So what Tesla recommend is that unless you're going on a road trip, you charge it about 80-90%. So I normally set mine to 85 and then when it gets to 85% it just automatically stops charging. Next we can control the aircon, so if I click this it should turn the aircon on in the car, which you can just hear ever so slightly. Obviously the Tesla app's designed for when you're not in the car because you can do all of these things in the car. So you can imagine this would be really handy if it was a really hot day and you just wanted to get your car nice and cool before you got in it on your drive to work. Also, if we skip ahead to climate, we get a more detailed overview of this. So if I click turn on climate and increase the temperature, then it will make the car very, very hot. So this would be helpful on a cold day. If I press this one, you should be able to hear that the very intense air con has come on. So it's going to defrost the car and all that kind of thing. Right, let's turn that off. Jesus Christ. There's a little button for opening the frunk. Becky and I have found this useful when coming out of Tesco's. We've got our groceries and we just want to shove them in the frunk. So all you do is you click that. You have to click OK. And then it pops open. On the picture, it shows it's popped open full screen, but it is not power assisted. So I have to go ahead and open it like this. And then to close it, you can't close it with the app. You have to put two hands there. You can also lock and unlock the car from wherever you are. When you lock it, the mirrors fold in. It does a little beep just to let you know. With media, we can control what music is on. So I guess this could potentially be handy for people sat in the back seat. If I click yeah. play. I'm in a cabana chant and all the stand up banner. Well, you don't got the stamina, you're lacking the stamina. You're lacking the stamina while you're divorced. <laughs> Not quite sure what we were listening to last. <laughs> But you can skip songs and you can change the volume and all that. Phone key is just showing that my phone is connected and you can use it as a key. So when you get needs to the car with the phone in your pocket, it just automatically unlocks. Controls. There's quite a lot in controls. Vent, I'm not 100% sure what it does, so I'm just going to press it and we'll find out. Oh, it's opened all four windows simultaneously. And if I click close, I assume it'll move them back up. That's pretty cool. Flash will flash the lights. And honk will honk the horn. <laughs> Start, I've never actually clicked, but I assume it just puts it into... Oh, it pops up, enable keyless driving. You'll have two minutes to start driving, so you have to enter your password. I'm not going to bother with that because it's very easy to start the car. You just press the brake and put it into gear. Front trunk you've already seen, but you can also do the rear trunk. So if I click it and then I click yes, you can hear that it's opened. But once again, the Model 3 isn't power assisted like the Model X is. So I have to then go out and open it the rest of the way. And then close it again. Valet mode. Basically, it's for if you're leaving your car to get parked by a professional at a fancy hotel or if you're getting the car professionally cleaned, something like that. We've done a whole video on this, so you can click the little eye up here if you want to watch that. But it's pretty handy that you can turn it on and off here. You just have to enter your four-digit pin, which I think is still one, two, three, four from the video. I really need to remember to change that. Sentry mode, you can also turn on and off. Sentry mode records all four cameras. There's one at the front, one at the side, one over there, and one behind. So that'll record all the time, and if something weird happens, like someone gets a bit too 
too close to your car, it'll make sure to save those clips into a specific separate folder. Really, really handy. It does use your battery up slowly though. If it's left on for about 24 hours, I've seen about 10, 12% battery disappear, but I think that's fair enough for basically a really high tech CCTV system. Speed limit mode does exactly what you'd expect as well. In the UK, Tesla default it to 85, but it's not enabled. I've moved it down to 50 just to see what the lowest you can make it is. I guess it's handy to have if you do want it because it is very easy to speed in this car because the acceleration feels very effortless. So if you're not paying 100% attention, you could find that you've accidentally gone to 90 miles an hour. And that's everything in controls. We've had a look at charging already. This is just the same as uh, if you click the battery at the top. Location shows exactly where you are at all times. And if you go onto it, you can actually see a map with the car specific location and your specific location. So the car is the little red one and I'm the little blue fella. So obviously right now we're in the same spot, but you can go straight to your car, you can go straight to you and you can choose whether you want the normal map or you want the satellite map. Schedule service is fairly self-explanatory. If you need to schedule a service for your car, you can choose what the issue is and you can get it booked in without actually having to talk to any humans, which is always a bonus. And right at the bottom of the screen, we'll blur out my vehicle identification number but it shows your current mileage. So mine is 1,953 at the moment. It shows what software version you're using. So it's 2020.4.1. And I don't know what those other numbers are. I think that's perhaps just more details about the software version. And that's everything other than summon, which is probably the coolest thing about the car. We showed a little bit at the beginning, but if I just hold down forwards, the car starts moving at one miles an hour forwards. And if we stop, it stops very suddenly. If we hold reverse, it goes into reverse. The rear view camera pops up, Obviously this is designed for if you're not actually in the car. It's designed for things like getting out of a tight parking space or a tight garage, that kind of thing. So I use it to reverse out of my garage every time. They also added Smart Summon, which is pretty rubbish in the UK at the moment because you have to be within about three meters of the car and it can only do 20 meters at a time. In America, you can use this to make your car travel to you from across a car park. But here, I can't really get it to do anything. You can see the end of the road there, the junction. But on the map, it won't even let me travel that far. And that's definitely not 20 meters. But if I hold down Go to Target, the car will start traveling to it and it avoids obstacles on the way. This is a really, really cool feature. So it goes all the way to here. I'm not touching anything. It would do this if I was in the car or not. And there we go, summon complete. It's gone to exactly where you want. Let's give it a bit of a challenge to end off the video. I'm gonna change the target to back where I was behind me. So I think that means it's probably gonna try and turn around, which it does sometimes have a little bit of difficulty with. I'm ready to stop as well, just in case we scrape any curbs or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> like he's been thrown around all over the place. <laughs> so you can see it said maximum distance traveled. So apparently it's done 20 meters. It literally hasn't. It's probably done what, like seven meters maximum? So the EU says that you have to be within six meters of the car, but when we've tried it, it feels more like three meters. So if I just stand outside the car and I do basic summon with reverse, the car starts moving. I'm gonna stay exactly where I am so we can see when it is that it stopped. So apparently it can get six meters away. Here we go. And now it's stopped. So that's as far as it'll let me go at the moment. I'm having another go just to be sure that we can get the maximum distance out of it. Oh, it's gone a little bit further, but it's going so much slower than it normally does. And now it's stopped again. It's barely moving at all. All right, reverse is just refusing to work. Uh, let's work out how far that actually is. So from the closest point of the car, we're three meters, which is half as much as advertised. But we'll try smart summon as well, just in case that makes any difference, because it looks like it doesn't want to just reverse with regular summon anymore. You can see it's been saying summon is stopping for a while, even though I've not actually done anything with summon. So it does this sometimes when I'm reversing it out of the garage, it just randomly stops and it spends 30 seconds on the summon is stopping screen, which gets quite frustrating because it turns something that should take, you know, 30 seconds max, it turns it into taking a couple of minutes. Maximum distance has been traveled apparently already. So let me get back in. I'm gonna reset the maximum distance. All I need to do is this, and that's reset it. Please close doors to use summon. There we go. I'm gonna stand here about three meters away and I'm gonna press go to target and we'll see how far it goes before it says it's too far away. So it goes much faster on smart summon. Waiting for phone to come back in range. Oh, but now it's off again. It keeps switching between, oh, it's actually, it's never gone this far, where's he going? <laughs> Wait, is your phone in the car? Yeah. I think it, it's seeing Becky's phone as a key. Okay, I've grabbed Becky's phone out of the car because it might think that that was a key, which allows it to go further than normal. So let's try again. Preparing to summon, waiting for phone to come back in range. Yeah, I think it's because Becky's phone was in the car. 
That's kind of like a little EU loophole at the minute, but if I walk towards it, it looks to be working again. Waiting for phone to come back in range, so if I go a little bit further, is it going to start moving again? Yes, it is. Waiting for phone to come back in range. It's having a little bit of a fiddle. Waiting for phone to come back in range, but then I've not moved and it's still just moving a little bit slowly. So it's, it's, it is weird. It's very strange. Summon is just a test at the minute. It is just quite unpredictable. It's still a really cool little thing to play about with though. Right, it looks like that's as far as it wants to go. So let's check if that is actually six meters. Cause to be fair, I think it might be. Right, that's, uh, that's five meters from the front. Perhaps six meters from the console area, which is maybe the center point of the car. I don't know. So it looks like the six meter limit is effective on smart summon, but it looks like it's close to three meters on regular summon for whatever reason. Anyway, that is everything in the Tesla app now. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Remember to click that like button and that subscribe button as we upload twice a week at the moment. A very cool car. The app's really handy for a lot of things. There's also some pointless stuff on it as well, but just nice to play about with. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.